Yeah, so saw this video of Randy Moss, right? And he's upset because of something that Coach Gruden said in an email back in 2011, you know? And in the statement, you know, his response, Randy Moss is like, you know, I just can't believe that we're going backwards and trying to say to Randy Moss, dude, we never went forward. <laughs> you know, y'all literally, y'all never went forward. As NFL players, you didn't go anywhere. You, you basically been on a treadmill, going nowhere since the 1960s. There, there isn't shit that the players union of the NFL has accomplished on your behalf in 40 years. So I don't know why Randy wants to get up there and act like racism you know, doesn't exist or it's not a part of the NFL. It is the NFL. It is everything that embodies the NFL. The whole thing is built upon racism. So when you see an NFL player that has successfully made it to that level of football, you know, it, don't, it doesn't just say that he was the greatest to come through high school and to do it in college. It also says that this is a finished work of white supremacy right here. This suppressed, muted, nutless Negro is the finished product. He's not going to say anything about anything. A coach can call him a nigga right to his face. And he's just going to produce a video and tear up. It's a type of African-American man that we really, the intellectual intellectuals amongst our community, really need to distance ourselves from because they are not, they, nor have, have they ever been, examples or role models for our sons. We don't want them to think that the only way you can accomplish anything in life is to risk or damage your body entertaining a bunch of racist ass white people. Gruden is Gruden. Gruden is a white coach who, in which everything he has in life, he benefited off of black football players. It's this exploitive system that starts in little league football goes all the way up. No, in Little League, you got a lot of daddies out there. That's really the exploiting starts for African-American kids is because the first person to exploit them is actually the daddy. He's the one, he, you know, we're the ones who bring them out there to do that shit. And we hand them over to a white man to continue it. That's why of John Urshel, they said that, you know, this guy would be okay with or without football. He doesn't really need football because football doesn't want... And uh, you know, an educated Negro, it wants the finished product. The finished product are those who can't do shit without it. Those who can't see life without it. When all around them, there are areas of industries in which people are making billions of dollars who are not, who are not doing it savagely. But when, you, when you've taken a bunch of Negroes and who, that have been conditioned all of their lives to think that the white coach is the only savior for them. This is what you get. You get a Hall of Fame wide receiver on television, a multimillionaire crying because a dog decided to bite. That's what the fuck they do. They bite. Snakes bite. You can't act shocked when a white man acts like a dog and bites your ass. It's in his nature. We all we we are only two degrees of separation from be called from being called a nigga. You are a one you are a, you are one argument away from a white coach calling you a nigger. One argument away. You don't believe me? Try it. Somebody tried it at Clemson. Somebody tested it at Clemson and was called a nigger. So keep crying, Randy Moss. Keep crying. Because a dog bit you. But nobody told your ass to stick your finger in the gate. 